Coming up next on Channel 8 Eyewitness News, a domestic shooting leaves a Las Vegas woman and her husband dead. That shooting happened in front of a church. A live report coming up. With a sniper on the loose, tourists leaving Las Vegas on their way back to the East Coast to talk about their fears. Plus, city officials and business owners bet on a new Neonopolis Entertainment Center to boost the image and economy of downtown Las Vegas. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. I heard like maybe three, almost automatic, pow, pow, pow. I, I went to 911, called them. A Valley woman is dead after police say she was shot and killed on her way to church by her estranged husband. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Colleen May. That shooting happened this morning in front of a church on Harmon and Escondido near Maryland Parkway. The suspect fled in his car and was found dead in a parking lot near Southeastern and Tropicana. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live with Janine Gill. She's been following the story throughout the day and joins us with the very latest. Janine. The woman was, the woman passed away a couple of hours ago. She was on her way to church this morning just after 9 when she was allegedly shot by her estranged husband. Uh, just an hour ago there was a prayer circle and one of the parishioners came out here and left a rose in her memory. She was laying right there where that glove is. That's my glove. Lenora Nichols points to the sidewalk where she found a woman curled up on the ground bleeding. Uh, she was bleeding from her hand and she had ripped clothes in the back. They were ripped so I looked and she had a bullet entrance wound in, in her back and I applied pressure to the bleeding. The woman was on her way to attend the Sunday morning service at the Church of Religious Science. Police say that's when her estranged husband pulled up in his car and opened fire. I heard like maybe three almost automatic pow, pow, pow. An off-duty police officer who lives nearby heard the gunshots and saw a man in a car holding a gun. He raised his badge, shouted that this was the police and that the man should stop. The man continued towards him and raised the gun towards the officer and the officer fired at least twice. The driver, who is believed to be the victim's estranged husband, sped off. Minutes later, he was found dead inside his car in a parking lot near Tropicana and Eastern. It's unknown if he died from the officer's gunfire or a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Back at the church, parishioners were left disturbed over the morning's events. The minister tried to comfort them. And he tells people to come away from the window and come into the church and go into prayer. But after hearing their fellow parishioner passed away from her injuries at the hospital, those prayers of healing turned into prayers of comfort for her family. Police uh, were told by parishioners that the woman may have had a protective order against her estranged husband. Right now, the coroner's office has not yet released her identity or the identity of her estranged husband. Janine Gill, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. And our thoughts go out to her family and friends. Thanks, Janine. In other news, more than 80,000 football fans turned out for Redskins game in Washington today. Many said that they won't let the fear of a serial sniper keep them at home. Meanwhile, as the hunt continues for the shooter, authorities say they need the public's help, but they don't want the killer to know how much they know. That's why lately they've been releasing less information. However, police have confirmed the existence of the only apparent communication from the killer, a tarot card with the words, quote, Mr. Policeman, I am God, written on it. This weekend, police also released this composite of a white truck that was seen by witnesses. Someone that does repairs may have had a truck like this brought to them to have the rear damage repaired. Uh, perhaps someone has had this vehicle painted. Police are also looking for a white Chevy Astro van witnesses saw speeding away from Friday's shooting. Since October 2nd, eight people have been killed and two others injured. Because of those shootings, tourists here in Las Vegas who are headed back home near the nation's capital this weekend say they're concerned about their safety. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Yetta Gibson joins us from McCarran Airport with that part of the story. Yetta. Colleen, people say with everything going on in D.C., many people say they came to Las Vegas to get away from it all. But for many people, now the vacation is over, and some say coming back home is frightening. I think I will be a bit scared. They've spent the weekend in Las Vegas. Now they're on their way back home. Julie Moody and her boyfriend live in Alexandria, Virginia. Their flight lands in Baltimore, Maryland. 
Boogie Works in downtown Washington, D.C., virtually in the midst of a rash of random, deadly sniper shootings. I would really just be more careful and be sure that everything is okay before stopping for gas or just walking in the street. Just be more careful. Julie's boyfriend feels just the opposite. Do you feel safe going back? No, pretty safe. I don't feel scared. They're just doing target shooting and they obviously have no feeling for the people or for their families and I think it's a psychopath. Your bags are checked and going to security. Like Anita Delaport, many passengers in town from the D.C. area have spent their time here watching the news, keeping up with what's going on back home. I've also talked to my son and, and told him to be more careful, and I think everyone is trying to be more careful. Baltimore-bound passengers headed back east on a 456 America West flight. For many people who live in that area, these shootings are hitting very close to home. Coming up later, we'll speak with a woman who says one of the shootings happened in the exact same neighborhood as where one of her relatives lives. That's part of that part of the story is coming up at 11. Yetta Gibson, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. Thanks, Yetta. We'll see you then. The family of a local woman who police say was murdered says they're relieved about the arrest of her husband. Police arrested 56-year-old William Rundell in Orlando, Florida, Friday night for the murder of his wife, Shirley. Now, Shirley Rundell's son-in-law spoke to Channel 8 over the phone, saying, quote, We're very glad that he has been found and taken into custody. Now we just hope to get clarification on the whole situation, and then we'll go from there. The Rundles were first reported missing August 16th. Authorities believe an unidentified body found in California in August may be that of Shirley Rundle. Metro detectives say Rundle claims his mother, who had also been missing, died of natural causes in 1996. William Rundle is expected to be extradited to Las Vegas this week. The man accused of causing a crash that killed a Las Vegas Sun executive is expected in court tomorrow. Police say 21-year-old John Simbrat fell asleep at the wheel and slammed his car into the rear of Sandy Thompson's car while she sat at a red light on the Beltway. Investigators say Simbrat had marijuana in his system at the time of the accident. He faces one count of DUI, death involving drugs, reckless driving, and one count of involuntary manslaughter. Downtown Las Vegas hopes to cash in big on a new playground for adults that's set to open tomorrow. The highly anticipated Jillian's Entertainment Center and Restaurant is opening at Neonopolis. It's a new 43,000 square foot facility that features bowling, billiards, and burgers. The employees and city officials hope it will boost the image of downtown Las Vegas. It opens tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. and it will stay open every night until 4 a.m. So let's hope it uh, helps the economy and the image. It's time to head over to the Weather Center. Check in with Mark Fister, a man who knows all about image. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It turned out to be a gorgeous day in the Valley. Hold on, we got to turn on the microphone there, Colleen. There we go. That's a lot better right there. Uh, Screwed up my image, didn't it? There we go. Uh, we are looking at a decent weekend, uh, what's wrapping up to, uh, to be a decent weekend. 82 degrees now at Eastern, 76 at East Sahara. 82 out at East Cary, 77 at El Dorado, 77 at North Buffalo, 77 out at West Trop. 73 at Searchlight, 51 now at Mount Charleston, 71 at Beatty, 53 at Pioche, and 42 at Bryan Head. Looks like a great week ahead. We'll give you details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Colleen? Thanks, Mark. We'll see you then. President Bush condemns what's being considered the worst terrorist attack in Indonesia's history. We'll have the latest coming up. And he was determined to make history fun, and he did just that. We'll have a look back at one of history's greatest writers. Plus, the NFL's only unbeaten was beaten. Chris Matthews has that and a lot more coming up in sports. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News with Colleen May. Neighborhood weather with Mark Fister and sports with Chris Matthews. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. This portion of Eyewitness News is brought to you by Nevada Federal Credit Union. Who do you trust in the race for Congress? Dario Herrera? Involved in scandal after scandal after scandal. Who has offered no ideas, no vision, only sham public hearings and lies. Or John Porter. As a former city councilman, mayor, and state senator, John Porter has a proven record of accomplishment and the character to lead in Congress. John Porter is a man of integrity Nevada can count on. There's only one choice. John Porter, a congressman we can trust. The war against violent crime doesn't start in the courtroom. It starts at the highest level of the district attorney's office, where DA Stu Bell and his chief deputy Mike Davidson make critical decisions and lead the war on crime. 
Under Mike Davidson's leadership, our district attorney's office has a trial conviction rate of better than 95%. They've put away our community's most dangerous and violent criminals while protecting the rights of victims. Let's keep a proven leader fighting for us. Elect Mike Davidson for Clark County District Attorney. Wonder why John Porter's special interest friends are attacking Dario Herrera? Because Herrera is fighting the drug companies to lower prescription costs. And John Porter, he's taken thousands from the drug industry. Dario Herrera has always opposed plans to privatize Social Security. Porter hasn't. Herrera supports real HMO reform. And John Porter, $65,000 from the insurance industry and sides with the special interests. Neighborhood Weather is brought to you by Lamplight Neighborhoods and your hometown neighborhood builder, Karina Home. Two Americans are among the more than 180 people killed in the terrorist attack on the tourist island of Bali. Hundreds were injured. President Bush is condemning the attacks, calling last night's explosions a, quote, heinous act of terrorism. A bomb went off outside a nightclub, a second outside a bar, and then a third near the U.S. consulate. Now, even though there's been no claim of responsibility, suspicion has turned to Al-Qaeda and an affiliated group. The bombing comes on the second anniversary of the Al-Qaeda-linked attack against the USS Cole in Yemen that left 17 sailors dead. A UNLV professor says the tourist island will have a hard time recovering from those bombings. Tourists there are cutting their, short their vacations, leaving for home on the first available flights. Many spent the night on the beach terrified to go near built-up areas. Now, UNLV professor Dr. Steve Parker specializes in foreign tourism policy and recently spent time in Bali. He says their tourist industry is similar to Las Vegas, and what happened there could happen anywhere. See, with the Bali example, is what happens when not enough resources are devoted to security for that basic industry. When that basic, when the bottom falls out of that industry, the bottom falls out of everything. And that's what's going to happen in Bali. Bali is popular with Australians and Japanese nationals and has long been considered a safe haven for tourists. Best-selling author Stephen Ambrose is being remembered tonight for telling stories of ordinary soldiers. Ambrose died at a Mississippi hospital today after battling lung cancer. The writer is best known for his World War II-inspired work, Band of Brothers, and most recently, he consulted on Steven Spielberg's fictional World War II blockbuster, Saving Private Ryan. Spielberg and Tom Hanks turned his Band of Brothers into an award-winning HBO miniseries. Stephen Ambrose was 66 years old. Overcast in the valley today, but the temperatures made up for those cloudy skies. A nice evening, and it looks like more of the same is on the way for the week ahead. Mark Fister has your weather forecast coming up. And local law enforcement officers are sitting high this weekend to raise money for Special Olympics. They say life is full of choices, but sometimes there's only one choice, like your power bill. That's why when Nevada Power announced massive hikes, Aaron Kenny fought to stop the gouging. Aaron Kenny supports a public power company that will cut rates and save consumers billions. But Lorraine Hunt takes thousands from Nevada Power and refuses to support public power. Life is full of choices. On November 5th, choose Aaron Kenny. Violent crime is sky high. Robberies up 9%. Aggravated assaults up 35%. Murders up 49%. And they're still arresting people for small amounts of marijuana? Cops spend 10,000 hours a year arresting people for small amounts of marijuana. That time would be better spent going after murderers, rapists, and other violent criminals. That's why I'm voting yes on question nine. In the privacy of a home or under the care of a doctor, vote yes on question nine. The ruling is in. Judge Donald Mosley, guilty of violating seven judicial canons of ethics. Mosley was strongly censured, then ordered to take an ethics course and fined $5,000. Recently, the Nevada Supreme Court overruled Mosley six times in six weeks for being wrong. The journal said, the reputation of our judicial system will be well served if voters cast their ballots for anyone but Judge Donald Mosley. It's time someone with ethics sat in this chair. Who's in charge of Clark County? The new Clark County Regional Justice Center is more than a year behind schedule and $33 million over budget. Dario Herrera is chairman of the board of Clark County Commissioners. The son wrote of the Justice Center project, millions have been wasted and not the way good government is supposed to work. A government asleep at the switch. 
The Sun editorial said it screams of mismanagement. Ask Dario, who's minding the store. $10,000 was raised here in the Valley for Special Olympics this weekend in a first-of-its-kind fundraiser. North Las Vegas police and officers from Las Vegas Detention and Enforcement took part in the first-ever law enforcement building sit. They camped out on a billboard at the Walmart on West Craig and the 7-Eleven on Tropicana and Decatur for three days and two nights. When you see these folks out there and they're giving it 100% when they're doing their competition and they're winning their medals and what have you, it's a pretty fulfilling thing. Special Olympics Nevada provides year-round sports training and competition for children and adults with um, disabilities free of charge. I had a chance to uh, sit up there with the lieutenant Friday afternoon, and he's a trooper. He had his sleeping bag up on the uh, manpower. Thing. Oh, yeah, great people. Yeah. great people. Real quick, I'd like to thank the Southern Nevada Home Builders Association for inviting me to MC their big uh, Speaking awards of gala last manpower. night. Speaking of manpower, there you go. Had a great time last night over the MGM Grand, and uh, so... It was fun. Good, good weekend. That's, and, and most importantly, thanks to Sherry Swens for filling in for me last night. All right, let's talk about what's happening as far as our weather goes. Not much. Back to you, Colleen. Uh, sun is setting. Skies are getting a little dark, but there is some partly cloudy skies above our head here in the valley. Look at the high temperatures today. Only a couple of them, 90 or better. 91 at West Trop and at Cheyenne. 90 at East or 92 at Windmill. Everywhere else, anywhere from about 83 to about 88, 89 degrees. 60... Uh, Actually, 60 degrees for a high today at Mount Charleston, 86 at Indian Springs, 77 at Searchlight, 91 at Laughlin, 98 out at Death Valley. Live in real time, Judge Trip Elementary School, 76 degrees, winds out of the west southwest at about 3 miles an hour. 80 now out at Eastern at Sunrise Acres Elementary School with no wind to speak of there. Out at Valley View, Hyde Park Middle School, sitting at 88, winds out of the south at 10 with 15% humidity. And 75 out of West Alexander at Sheila Tarr Elementary School. Officially today, what do we top out at? Right at 83, 57 was the low this morning. 78 over 54, the normal high and lows. 95 over 36, the record high and low back in 1940, 1943, respectively. We're looking at a little ridge of high pressure building in. That's what's bringing in the cloud cover, giving us some partly cloudy skies over the next couple of days. Then a little weak low pressure system will move on through, giving us partly cloudy skies still through the middle of the week, but dropping our temperatures a little bit. These partly cloudy skies will linger throughout the night tonight and through the day tomorrow. It'll be at least five days before we see mostly sunny skies, but it'll be nice to have a little bit different look to the sky. 59 now at Elko, 54 at Salt Lake, 58 at the Canyon, 90 at Phoenix, and uh, 68 in the Los Angeles area. Look for L.A. to top out at 73 tomorrow, 92 in Phoenix, 68 in Denver, 67 in Boise, and 80 in Medford. Here's our forecast for the week ahead. 57, partly cloudy skies tonight. The winds will be light. will be a little bit warmer than the normal low of 54. For tomorrow, 84 degrees on partly cloudy skies, light winds, normal high right at around 78. So, hey, good day tomorrow. Out at Mount Charleston, look for 63 degrees and uh, partly cloudy skies. And uh, Lake Mead, 90 partly cloudy skies, light winds. Tonight's low around 58. For the week ahead, come on, Chris, hurry up, get out here. Are you stalling? Yes, I am. So if, they're, if you're short on time, it's because you didn't get here early enough. 85 on Tuesday, 82 on Wednesday, 80 on Thursday, 80 again on Friday, Keep and solid. then 79 Saturday and Sunday. Partly cloudy skies through the week, and then mostly sunny for Saturday and Sunday. That's a look at the forecast. All set? <laughs> hey, appreciate that. Uh, Thanks, Mark. Chris is here with sports, and you know Mark's been waiting all day for those Saints. We've got Saints. Promise? First. Yeah, first we're going to talk okay. baseball, though. Gene Autry smited in his grave tonight. There's a halo hovering over Anaheim, plus football. Indeed, the Saints used to be the Aints, but that ain't anymore. Good job. As promised, we'll show you how the Saints came marching in, and the Rebels still wondering what happened. I'm trying to put it into words. Next in sports. Who's in charge of Clark County? The new Clark County Regional Justice Center is more than a year behind schedule and $33 million over budget. Dario Herrera is chairman of the board of Clark County Commissioners. The Sun wrote of the Justice Center project, millions have been wasted and not the way good government is supposed to work. A government asleep at the switch. The Sun editorial said it screams of mismanagement. Ask Dario, who's minding the store?
Meet Nevada Supreme Court Chief Justice Bill Maupin. Since becoming a judge in 1993, Bill Maupin has consistently been ranked among the highest rated judges in Nevada. Nevada Supreme Court is one of the busiest in the nation, yet has reduced its backlog by 40% since Bill Maupin joined. Bill Maupin has championed innovative judicial programs to make all of our state courts more efficient and responsive. Bill Maupin knows that justice delayed is justice denied. Innovative, hardworking, experienced, and knowledgeable. Re-elect Chief Justice Bill Maupin. Question 14 looks simple, but it is a costly, risky venture. 14 is well over a $3 billion gamble by politicians with our money. It puts inexperienced bureaucrats in charge of running the electric system and keeping our lights on. That puts us all at risk. Please join us in opposing 14. Watch for our mailer and return the card immediately. Question 14. The more you know about it, the less you'll like it. Well, the Angels know all about disappointment. Twice they played in the ALCS only to go home losers. In their 42-year history, never have they won the AL crown, but that all changed in one inning. Trading 5-3, the Angels made a charge, and boy, a charge it was. The Twins had never seen anything like this. Anaheim erupts, tying a postseason record, 10 runs in the seventh. They sent 15 batters to the plate. Minnesota tried to slow them down with four pitchers. Adam Kennedy, the game's MVP, three hits, three homers. One in the seventh there for the first time since joining the league in 61. The Angels are in the World Series beating the Twins 13 to 5. Boy, excitement. There must have been a few Angels in the outfield. Angels are in the World Series. They open at home on Saturday against either the Giants or the Cardinals. Giants lead that series two games to one right now. St. Louis leading two to nothing. NFL now. The NFL's last unbeaten fell today. The Oakland Raiders were sailing along, but... They ran into the Rams. St. Louis sitting at the bottom of the NFC West at 0-5, playing on Jerry Rice's birthday. He's 40, but no celebration for Rice and the Raiders. Marshall Falk scores on the short pass, and the Raiders, a bunch of penalties and some bad luck. Pass play tipped and picked. Another touchdown here. Raiders lose for the first time. Hey, Rams win for the first time this year. Final St. Louis, 28-13. The New Orleans Saints are off to their best start since 93. Today, they scored their most points since 87. Needless to say, the game was one to write home about. Former truck delivery man Michael Lewis returns a punt and a kickoff for a touchdown. You want to see both of them? You see both right now, right here. There's the kickoff return right there for a score. Saints are rolling along all day. They strolled to an easy 43-27 win over Spurrier's Redskins. World champions embarrassed at home against the Green Bay Packers. Last year's Super Bowl MVP was picked off three times. Tom Brady looked like Greg Brady. Boy, it was a live ball right here, wasn't it? It's still alive. Look, it's a live ball. Finally, someone jumps on it. It was the Packers. Brett Favre moved into third place on the all-time touchdown list. He fired three TDs today. Green Bay improves to 5-1, and one, while the Pats drop to 3-3 three and three after losing their third straight final 28-10, the Pack. On the board, it was 31-24 Buffalo. Dallas ekes by Carolina, 14-13. 17-10, Atlanta got a win. Indianapolis by two, 22-20. It was 31-24 Minnesota. Finally gets a win. Pittsburgh looking pretty good, 34-7 over the Cincinnati Bengals. Tennessee, 23-14. Tampa Bay, 17-3. Nice win. It was 9-7, Miami losing in the first half right now. And 35-34, San Diego got a big one. They came back to beat Kansas City. The Rebels let one slip away last night, a loss that may have crushed their postseason bull hopes. And, boy, many things went wrong in last night's loss, and it's kind of tough to put into words. Thank you. Good job. Good luck, Cal. Mr. Rice. Yeah, some mishaps, some emotions. A little bit by everybody. It's a nightmare, man. A total nightmare. The way things happen, the turnovers, the fumbles under center, and we just ain't come out and play the way we supposed to play. I, re I really don't know. I can't really tell you what happened. I mean, <laughs> as bad as we did play, we had a lot of opportunities to win this ball game, and we just didn't finish it. UNLV plays BYU Saturday. You can see it right here on Channel 8, beginning at 4. BYU, the early 10.5-point favorite. 18th-ranked Air Force is a 3.5-point favorite to beat Notre Dame this weekend. Golf now. 
Couldn't have asked for a better weekend to play the final of the Invincis Classic. David Duvall goes into the final 18 holes sure. with the lead, but it just wouldn't last. Stuart Appleby would pass Duvall with an easy eagle on 16, yes. four birdies on the back nine. Stuart Jim Furyk knows the course real well, always seems to be in the hunt out here. He finished in fourth. David Duvall didn't have his best game. He shot a 71, but maybe he had the best putt of the day. This long, long putt lands on six. Nobody can slow down the New Zealander, though. Coming up right here, he's going to hit the shot up close enough. And uh, Tatarange is a guy's name, and he wins $900,000 for the uh, for the Invincis Classic. So not a bad weekend. Yeah, not uh, bad at work. all. Thanks, Chris. Coming up tonight on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 11, the newest phase of the U.S. 95 widening project opens tonight. We'll have the very latest. And the Clark County Health District will start offering free flu shots to people who are in high risk groups. Find out when and where. Those stories and more tonight at 11. And before we leave you tonight, in an effort to increase voter education and participation, KLES is providing free airtime to qualified candidates in the congressional races. Every night until the election, you'll hear directly from the candidates in an unedited statement. Tonight we hear from the candidates in Congressional District 3. Hi, I'm Dario Herrera, and I'm running for the U.S. Congress because after serving in the State Assembly and on the County Commission, I have seen the tremendous impact the federal government has on the lives of Nevadans, and I believe the new 3rd District is an opportunity to make Nevada's voice in Washington even louder. I believe government should be smaller and more effective to meet the needs of the people without taking too much of their hard-earned money or prying into their personal lives. Nevada deserves a fighter in Congress to improve education and the economy, protect Social Security, improve access to quality, affordable health care, and hold the big corporations accountable. We need a strong, determined voice in Congress, someone who will never back down and never sit on the sidelines. I promise that I will always be independent and stand up to the powerful special interest, and I will always, always put Nevada families first. For details on my campaign agenda, please visit my website at nevadafamiliesfirst.org. I started my small family business right here in Southern Nevada 20 years ago. A lot has changed since then, but a few things haven't. Values like hard work, integrity, and giving something back to the community still matter. As city councilman, mayor, and state senator, I've worked hard to make a difference for Nevada. Together, we've built new schools. We've cleaned up our air and built new roads at a rate second to none, but we can do so much more. It's time Washington, D.C. step up and pay their fair share. It's also time that Congress stop scaring seniors to win elections. Our seniors deserve a prescription drug benefit under Medicare and deserve to know that their Social Security checks are protected. They deserve both now. The rhetoric has gone on long enough. So if you believe that integrity and community are still important, I want to be your next congressman. Closed captioning is brought to you by the pediatric program at Summerlin Hospital. We know kids. Yucca Mountain is right for America's families. It seems to me that yucca is something that must be done. John Porter states opposition to Yucca Mountain, yet he's taken thousands from the people trying to make Nevada a nuclear dump. Dario Herrera is a national leader in fighting Yucca Mountain. I've watched Dario Herrera fight Yucca Mountain with determination and with commitment. And most importantly, Dario Herrera is independent, and he'll continue to fight Yucca Mountain.